Back on TYT Sports, you have now seen the top point guards, the top shooting guards, small forwards, and power forwards. Make sure to check out those links in the description below and comment on them as we finish off the hashtag ESPN rank from ESPN.com and we discuss with Andre Snellings from Rotowire the top 10 greatest centers of all time. This was a very difficult list, I think, for them to put together and for me to debate because there's the dominant list of centers is unbelievable. And Andre is going to discuss a little more when he was putting together his list uh, with a couple buddies that he had uh, over the greatest of all time. A lot of those guys were centers, which is very interesting. But we run through the list. Uh, number 10, Mr. Bill Walton, Bill Walton's son, pretty good at coaching as well. Number nine, George Mikan. Number eight, Patrick Ewing. That shot was going in. I don't care what anybody says. Seven, David Robinson. Number six, Moses Malone. Five, Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon. Four, Shaquille O'Neal, who recently said that he killed off the center position. Interesting words. At number three, Bill Russell, a defensive genius who epitomized the word leader, team, and champion, the greatest winner in the history of American sports. Eleven championships. Much different era of basketball, but eleven freaking championships. A five-time MVP, 15 points per game, 22 and a half boards. Andre Drummond's got nothing on you. Uh, number two, Wilt Chamberlain. An interesting debate is always the Wilt versus Bill uh, Russell debate. Bill Simmons does it in his book of basketball. It's across all the forums, and there's really no wrong answer. They both were unbelievable. But the stats, the sheer stats alone, Wilt averaged 47.6 points over a two-season period, grabbed 20 or more boards per game for 12 consecutive seasons, the most awesome offensive force in basketball history. Four-time MVP, 10-time All-NBA selection, two championships in 67 and 72, Career 30 points per game to center. Come on. Number one, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. His skyhook was the most unstoppable shot in NBA history, and he could play D, pass, and why I added this quote for this reason, he could hit his free throws too. Learn to hit your free throws. Kareem could do it. Six-time MVP, six-time NBA champion, 24 points, 24.6 points per game. It's funny when you look at the rebounds, because 11.2 compared to, like, you know, Wilt's, you know, 745 rebounds per game and Bill Russell's 720 rebounds per game. Exaggerations, guys. Don't worry. Uh, it looks so minuscule, but Kareem, obviously, uh, up there as some of the greatest centers. In 2008-2009, fun fact, Brian Scalabrini played center, and we all know who the greatest center of all time is. It was Brian Scalabrini. Andre Snellings, where does Scalabrini uh, rank on your top 10 of all time? More importantly, what do you think of the centers? Uh, and, I mean, I'll, here's the question for you. Hakeem and Shaq and Moses Malone were so good, but uh, you look at them compared to the old school guys of Bill, uh, Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain. Do you think this list is in order correctly, and what was your list like when you were putting the centers? Okay, so um, my, my order is a little different, but before I get into it, I got to shout out Brian Scalabrini. <laughs> More importantly, his family. Um, I don't know if I've ever talked about it on here, but in 2010, um, me and my son, who at that time we were less than two years old, we flew to... Um, L.A. to watch Game 7 of the, the Lakers-Celtics oh, awesome. uh, uh, finals. And I was the only Celtics jersey in my area. <laughs> Brian Scalabrini's family came and found me after the game wow. and, and, you know, gave me a, hey, you know what, thanks for the support. You know, I was like, that was cool. You know, so anyway, as far as this, um, this order, I have a slightly different order. Um, Bill Russell, to me, is the best center of all time. Um, he's very arguably the best basketball player of all time. So he's number one on my center's list. Um, and it's not just for like the, the, you know, people think of, well, the 11 rings and well, he was a great defender. But when you look into him, he impacted the game so ridiculously. And yes, it was a different era. Um, he discovered or he was one of the first people credited with no, if I, I jump and block a shot, I can change the way people score around the rim. Before that, jumping and block a shot was considered bad defense. You know, so Russell was just a game changer. He was like a basketball scientist. If you've ever read his book. I mean, he's to me, he's the best uh, center, at least that, that ever lived. Um, I also don't have Wilt as high as two. Um, I have him down a little bit lower. And it comes to what do you what do you consider good basketball or great basketball? How do you judge it? Do you judge it based on the box score? You know, do you, this player had this many points, rebounds. He must be awesome. Or do you judge it on how much his presence impacted the game? And you know, these days we have nerd stats, these plus minus stats that you can really kind of help granularize that comparison. But if you go back to the 50s, they didn't have plus minus stats. But you can look at situations where things changed. Like, for instance, when Wilt was traded from the Warriors to the 76ers, 
And the Warriors record, it was midway through the season. The Warriors record for the rest of the year was like the exact same as it was when they had Wilt. You know, Philadelphia's record for the rest of the year was almost the exact same as before they had Wilt. You know, so it's like he was killing the game as far as stats go, but compared to the Russells and the Shaqs and the the Kareems of, of this pantheon, I have Wilt a little lower than the rest. I was swayed after reading, as I, uh, the, I mentioned before, the Book of Basketball, and that's a little unfair because Bill Simmons obviously more biased towards Bill Russell than uh, Wilt Chamberlain as a Celtic fan. Uh, Bill Russell, not uh, Bill Simmons, not Jason Rubin. I'm a Knicks fan. So I'd put Patrick Ewing as number one. Joking, of course. But Bill Russell, it's always the stat argument. It's always, well, look at Wilt's numbers. Look at Wilt's numbers. But that's where I go, look at Bill's rings. I, I get it. Like, you know, Robert Horry had like a ton of rings. He's not the greatest player at his position of all time. No, but as you talked about right there, he did change the game. Also a pretty good passer, an underrated passer, I'd say, Bill Russell, uh, when he played, at least according to the, to the black and white tape that I have to watch. <laughs> Regardless, uh, we are running out of time here. I was just curious, one more thing, uh, just your thoughts on Shaq's words in terms of the center position being dead. Um, dead is too strong a word because, I mean, for instance, we're seeing now Carl Anthony Towns, Andre right. Drummond, yeah. you know, DeMarcus Cousins. Like, there, there's some talent at the center position. But Shaq didn't, if, if, if it was dead, Shaq didn't kill it. The rules change in 2005 killed it. Yeah. Um, the game is set up now that you need your offense to come from perimeter players because they can take advantage of the rules. And if you're throwing it into the center each time, your offense just can't get quite as good as it can if you have an outstanding perimeter player. Yeah, I agree with that 100%, and a good shout-out for Carl Anthony Towns as much as we talk about poor Zingad uh, as a Knicks fan over here. Myself, Carl Anthony Towns is a tremendous talent. We're going to look back in five years and go, Wiggins and Towns played on the same fucking team? <laughs> <laughs> Two unbelievable players that the Timberwolves got. Regardless, leave your comments in the comments section below. We have all five positions now live and available for you guys to watch in terms from everything. Point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center. Do you think you agree with these lists? Do you agree with ESPN? Do you agree with Andre? Do you agree with, my, agree with myself? I'm basically stumbling over my words at this point. But comment below with what you think. Like, favor, and subscribe. Head over to rotowire.com. Check out the Hoops Lab. Make sure to check out the Daily Fantasy Advice. You can also follow that at, at ProfessorDRZ. That is Andre on Twitter, at JasonRuber91, at TYT Sports. We'll be back next week with more Hoops content. We'll see you then.